So welcome everyone to another one of my uh, ZBrush tutorials here. I haven't done one in a while, but uh, what I'm going to do here in this tutorial is demonstrate how to demonstrate a little different technique and a few things I've discovered about ZBrush. As you know, I've been using ZBrush for over 11 years and I have well, steadily watched it and better and get better and better and it has just oodles of features, but something I recently discovered yeah, and we're going to demonstrate that and we're going to make a wine bottle and I'm going to show you how I go about it. So anyway, I've got my ZBrush application open here and I'm going to go over here to my tool pack, open up the Sweet Profile tool, uh, a tool that uh, I've used before and it's always something new. So we're going to, you can hit T to edit here and we've got a Sweet Profile. And you see it's put it on our Z grid there. Uh, it's anchored at zero 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 and uh, in technical terms. But anyway, we'll go down here and initialize. And what I want to demonstrate here is something that I just haven't really tried, but I found it's a really neat feature. So we're gonna get a shape for this wine bottle and we're gonna start here by pulling our little uh, little circles out and what I want to do is uh, shrink the radius on on these. As you see, you can just pull down on that, and it shrinks the radius. And we'll just kind of, kind of pull a shape here. And this one here, we won't do the same thing. Uh, when you decrease the radius, it makes for a uh, a sharper uh, corner on the uh, on the object you're making, or the uh, profile you're making. And we'll add another point in here. And the wine bottle kind of has a long, thin, uh, has kind of a bulbous shape here and and it thins out to a real thin neck and uh, I had one sitting on my my kitchen counter over here so I kind of took a quick look at it uh, you know if you really want to you can uh, you can take an image and attach it to a plane and have it in the background but I just was too lazy to do that so we're just going to eyeball this thing here and we're going to get our shape uh, worked out here. But what I want to demonstrate is how you can go in and save this shape. Let me add a point you too close together. I'm going to add another point in there in a the profile. And we're going to shape this thing up. But what I want to demonstrate to you is how you can save this file as a Z curve. And once you've got your wine bottle like you want it, you can bring it up over and oh maybe I'm just gonna pull that one off for now. We can do another trick here if we need to. We're gonna make the the top portion kind of short for now. What I wanna do is get a uh, a shape right here. And so anyway, so we got kind of a starting shape here. We'll pull this over a little bit, make it a little more perpendicular like so and we're gonna go for that right we'll go with that right now so we're going to smooth this uh, profile out a little bit now you can see that it is uh, infinitely thin in its state it has a thickness of uh, zero and uh, we want to add a little thickness to this bottle so if we go down here you got a thickness slider called a radial thickness and you can go in here and tap the bar the slider right there in the middle and just uh, do the numbers that you want for a little more precision so I'm going to go with four and hit enter and so now we got some thickness to our bottle we're going to stick with that but what I want to demonstrate here is how you can save this profile as a Z curve otherwise known as a dot Z Z C Z C V file so we're going to save that. And I previously saved one, but we're just going to save it over again. And uh, let's see if I can find the one I saved originally. But, uh, yeah, see I have a wine bottle, Z, Z, C, V. And so we're just going to replace that. And it's going to say, we're going to say yes. Okay. So we've replaced that. Now we've got this saved. So you can just go back in and pull the Z-curve up again and save you a little time on it. So anyway, 
Uh, we're going to make a bottom for this bottle. So we're going to go in up here and we're going to go, we're going to rename this. Uh, we'll call this uh, wine bottle. Like so. Then we're going to go over to our uh, cylinder tool here. And then we're going to uh, initialize this, smooth it out. And uh, decrease it in height. We're going to make it kind of like so. And then we're going to make this a poly mesh. And we're going to rename this wine bottle bottom. Like so. And we're going to go back and add, we have append the subtool we previously named wine bottle. And so now we can uh, move this down. We want to have it at the bottom. Need to do a little resizing here. And uh, so we want to resize. We've got our, our uh, you can see we got our Y and X is what we need. And we've got it selected in the subtools. So we're just going to turn off the Z. Oop. Turn off the Z def deformation, size deformation. And shrink it on down. And you can uh, put your transparency on to kind of. Get an idea what you're doing here. You might want to uh, go up and do your transformation here and slide this down a little further. Now holding the shift key and uh, making it stick to that uh, axis. And uh, now to closer match the thickness of the bottle. Well, let's get it sized down to the approximate circumference of the bottle and then we can turn off X and Y and uh, you can zoom in real close if you want to really work with precision so let's go back and resize this a little bit like so get it right inside the bottle there okay now we can turn off our X Y put on our Z and uh, We'll do a minus five. Mm. And then we'll just we'll just do the slider. Get a little thinner. Make it kind of match the uh, thickness of our bottle somewhat. Then we can do our transformation again. We can uh, just drag a new line here. And then hold down the shift key, put it in the center circle, and drag it back down where it's at the uh, bottom of the bottle. Alright, so uh, now we've got our bottle, bottle has a bottom. We're going to uh, take a look at our mesh and I'm going to do a little bit more, so a few more adjustments here. Uh, well first we're going to get on the mesh, the uh, wine bottle mesh. So, what I want to do is link this, lengthen this neck some before I go into a dynamax. So uh, we're going to turn that off, and uh, we're just going to do a mask here, and then we're going to invert the mask. You can invert the mask by tapping outside the bottle, hitting Control, and then invert the mask. Now you can just take your uh, transformation tool and draw a new little. Uh, line here. Hold down the shift key and just stretch that up a bit. <coughs> and then uh, you can uh, control and drag outside the canvas to release the mask. Now yes, we got our polygons, our, uh, our quads stretched there a little bit. So what we can do is tap outside the canvas, hold on the control key, and like tick down in it, that will relax it a little bit. And uh, so it's supposed to relax it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Uh, that's normally what it does. But anyway, so we've got our neck uh, lengthened a little bit. And uh, I want to do
do a little shaping on this. Because one bottle kind of has almost a circular type of, uh, of uh, transition there. So we're going to see what we can do with the smoothing tool. We're going to turn on uh, our <coughs> Z uh, symmetry, uh, radial symmetry that is. We got a fairly high count in there. I'm just going to see what we can do in a way of kind of, uh, oop, that's a little too much. Well, okay, maybe we'll have to, uh, maybe we'll just do the standard tool and add some to it. We can, yeah, okay. I see something here that I want to do. Oop, that's too much. So we'll just use a standard brush and we'll add some geometry there. Maybe all the way down. And then we'll hit our alt and uh, narrow the bottle neck up a little bit. So we're getting pretty close there. A little fluting action going on there. So now we're going to try our shift. Oh, that's going to be too much. Okay, so we're going to settle for that right now. What I want to do now is uh, turn on our frame here and look at our mesh. We're going to go ahead and dynamesh these two parts individually. And we're going to clear the mask on this uh, bottom, one bottle bottom. Make sure our mask is cleared before we do any additional dynameshing. Uh, go down to mask tool, clear that just in case. We'll go to our geometry tab. We're going to divide this up. We're going to give it some fairly good divisions. Because I want to add some other features. And uh, try to make a cool looking wine bottle here. So we are currently have the bottle itself selected. And we're going to dynamess that. And there's a projection in progress. Alright, that smooths that part out. Now we're going to go to the wine bottle bottom and do the same thing. Uh, we're going to go 512. And it looks like we're done. We can go up and uh, temporarily hide that. Yep. Okay, we've got everything meshed. Okay. So we got our two parts done meshed. And now we want to merge them. But uh, ZBrush 4R6 is what I'm currently using, which is the most up-to-date version. The last couple of versions have always come with these uh, really handy other tools that you find on the Z plugin. And Subtool Master is one that's been in the last two incremental versions. It's a really cool tool. And uh, you can actually merge down in the Subtool itself, but you'll lose these two separate parts. So what this plugin does, we'll just go in here and hit Merge. And uh, we'll have a merge tool, and plus we still have our remaining uh, individual pieces. And what's cool about that, in uh, ZBrush 4R6, what it does, even after you've done a mesh, uh, you still have polyframes. And that's what I really like about it. Now this is merge, but you notice it preserves the polygroup information. So you can actually uh, isolate this by going Control shift tapping on it. And so you still got a uh, poly mesh there. But yet, uh, both these parts are dynamics, so that's really a neat feature. Okay. So anyway, uh, I'm going to start adding a few features to our bottle here. And uh, I want to add a, like a small indentation on the bottom, but I want to smooth out. We're going to turn off this plane temporarily. And uh, we're going to go down here and we're going to do a little smoothing. We're going to have our uh, Symmetry on Z symmetry, Z radial symmetry. That is. And we're going to do a little smoothing here. Uh, we don't want our intensity. I like my focal shift to be zero. And uh, so we're going to not smooth real radically. Just going to get that little bit of a touch here. And actually, it may be best in this case to go ahead and, and uh, re dynamize this. 
And that's what we're going to do. That will, uh, well, I don't know. Let me see. If we can, if not, if we can preserve that polygroup information, it might be helpful. But, uh, alright, now we're just going to leave the polygroup information intact. Uh, temporarily. Because I want to, uh, put an indentation in the bottom of the bottle. But I want to add a little feature down here at the bottom. I'm going to switch over to the, uh, dam standard which uh, kind of pushes the clay in instead of building it up. Uh, another tool that's been around a while. I just recently discovered it. <laughs> Even after having used it ZBrush for over 11 years, somebody tipped me off about the, the damn standard tool. And then see this alpha is very pointed and uh, it adds a little crease. Like, well, not quite a crease, but an indentation. So we're going to put a little indentation down here. And actually, we're going to add some more counts to a radial there. And do a little number like that. And we can hold down the shift tool and smooth it out just a tad. And uh, I think before I finish the bottle, I'm going to redynamize the entire merge part. First, I'm going to add some more features. And I want to work on this top a little bit. So we're going to turn off our radial symmetry min uh, momentarily and hit control. I'm just going to use the uh, rectangle, and I want to kind of put a, uh, wait, before I do that, let me do this, I want to, s okay, now we got our, we got our next stretch long enough, yeah, I want to add this feature up here at the top, like so, and we're going to take this uh, mask and invert it, and what I want to do is thicken this a little bit, we're going to go down to our definition, we're going to increase the size X and Y, and I'll put in a, uh, say, like 8, and uh, maybe a little bit more. We'll add 5 of this. And I want to uh, flatten that a little bit on the top, in the Z axis. We'll put in a uh, value of see what 5 does. Too much. And we'll just put in uh, 1. I just want to make that just a little bit. Alright, so now I'm going to invert the mask. I'm going to uh, invert a little bit. And uh, I'm going to take my damn standard here. Wow, that looks almost too thick. Okay, we're going to go with that previous thickness. Now we're going to invert it. And blur it a little bit. We're going to uh, turn back on our rails, radial symmetry along the Z axis. Get our brush size down just a little bit. We're going to use our damn standard. We're going to cut the intensity down quite a bit. And I want to make a little indentation here, like so. And uh, see if we can smooth that just a little bit. Okay. So uh, let's see what else. Uh, I'm going to clear that mask temporarily, and I'm going to make a little indentation here, like so. And then smooth just a little bit. Right. We're going to lower the smoothing intensity down quite a bit. Yeah, something more like that. Now let's uh, flatten this top off a little bit. Go down to our deformation. Put in a value of 1. There we go. Now we can actually go in and maybe move that a little bit. Now we're getting somewhere. And we got our little uh, crease down at the bottom. <coughs> what I want to do now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, redynamize the entire object so we don't have the uh, poly group. I want this to be a complete whole bottle. 
But we're going to dynamite in pretty good size here. We're making a pretty dense object here. Now I want these uh, these little features to stand out. So we need a pretty high resolution mesh. So we're going to do 512. And wait for the projection in progress. It shouldn't kill too much of our detail. And it looks good. Alright. So we got some bumpiness down here at the bottom. But now we've got a complete mesh. So we can uh, maybe go in and do a little smoothing. And smooth this out. Like so. Still got a little crease down at the bottom for indentation. And uh, if you like, you can uh, maybe just do an up and down quick little smooth over everything. Like so. Now what I want to do is I want to make this bottle, bottom of the bottle, I want it to be kind of sucked in or uh, like a, uh, I don't know, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So we've got our bottle completely dynamesh. We've got, we've got one complete dynamesh. Everything looks pretty smooth. And now we're going to go to our masking tool. We're going to use a circle stroke for with with this. I'm going to hit square and center. We're going to turn on the Z floor again for reference. Maybe use our guidelines a little bit. Zoom in, Alt, then drag, and you can uh, get a better look at what you're doing. So we're going to turn the symmetry off again because it will complicate the uh, calculation. We got the uh, circle stroke, and we got our square center. We're going to pop it right there in the middle, pull it out like so. And uh, we got that mask. Now what I want to do is, here, if you look inside the bottle, you can see the bottom's mass and the other part's mass as well. Well, we don't want that. So we're going to go back to our stroke. We're going to turn off square center. And we're going to use this rectangle. And then we're going to hold down the Alt key instead to unmask. But remember, we've got a bottom on this bottle. So we're going to pull it just, just a little bit like so and off. Now, if you look at the bottom of the bottle, you see there's no mask in there. So now what we can do, we can invert this mask, like so. And that's just going to leave the bottom of the bottle. Now, what we else want, what else we need to do here, is we're going to blur this mask. And we're going to grow it a little bit. I'm going to turn off that floor again. You can see what's going on. And I'm going to grow it, blur it, grow it, blur it, grow it, blur it, grow it, blur it. So on and so on like that. So, you know, you're going to kind of keep it, kind of, you kind of create a gradient mask here, which is going to add some curvature to this indentation I want to make. So, <clears throat> now we want to make this deformation since we're sitting on a Z floor. We want to make this deformation along the z-axis. So we'll just turn off the floor temporarily. Just want to get that in for reference. And then we're going to size. We could also offset as well. Uh, matter of fact, let's just offset. We'll do an offset. See how that works. And we'll put in some real small values. Say, uh, we'll try minus 5. Okay, I like that. I like that. So uh, we got that little offset, that little indentation. We're going to call it good. All right. Could have used the size as well, but the offset seemed to be, I don't know, a little easier. So we're going to release this mask. We're going to clear it. All right. So we're moving right along here. We've got a little top on a wine bottle. Uh, this bottom looks a little bit sharp. Let's see what we can do with that. Maybe we can soften this up a tad. We'll mask it and then we'll inverse it. Maybe if we inflate this just a tiny amount down here in the deformation panel, let's see what's, what's going to happen. Uh, we'll blur this mask too to soften this whole effect. We'll blur it twice. And we're going to make a real small value inflation here. Let's go with three. Yeah, 
I like that. I like that. I like that. Okay. So we're going to go with that. And we're going to clear the mask. So now we have this wine bottle. It's uh, one complete Dyna mask. We've got some features on it. Uh, we've even... Let's look at this top here. This could, you know, we could inflate that feature at the top just a little bit. Let's see what we can do. We're going to go back to our mask. And put it on right about there. And then we're going to blur it. Twice. And then invert it. And we'll go down here and do a, just a real small inflation in the X and Y. Let's say five. Okay. We'll try four maybe or three. There we go. I think three is really good. And uh, we can polish that top again with a flatten. Real small value. Maybe we can just we'll tell, we're gonna stretch this a little bit. We're just we're not quite satisfied. So we're gonna use our transformation tool and pull this thing up just a tad. More like that. And then we're gonna go in and do a little flattening. Say a value of one. And then we can take our turn on our radial uh, symmetry. Have a high count there. Maybe decrease the brush size just a little bit. We we'll just get it on the corner here. Let's try the polish tool. Let's see what the polish tool can do. Maybe that'll give us kind of the look we're looking for. Mm, not quite. It seems to be inflating it a little bit. <coughs> you know what? We can do. Maybe and lower the intensity. Maybe we'll try the soft polish tool. Hopefully this one's a little softer. We'll do that. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. Get it on the inside here just a little bit. And then we'll just do our shift. Now yeah, we're getting something. Yeah, we'll back up a little bit. We'll just leave it at that. I think that's good. Anyway, so we got a wine bottle here. We got a single mesh. We've been adding just a few features here and there. And uh, I'm going to release that mask or clear it. And so now, the next step is we're going to do this transparently and we're going to put a gel shader on it. So <coughs> we're going to use the gel shader B. There's a slight difference between the two. I don't know exactly what it is. Let's turn on the floor again. And uh, we want kind of a green color here. Maybe this is a, uh, perhaps this is a, a bottle of any green springs or something. Uh, we'll fill it with color. So we got our uh, any green springs wine bottle here. And uh, so anyway, uh, the transparency deal. Okay, what I want to talk about here is. Uh, this is one of the things that took me uh, a long time to learn. I le actually learned about these three little icons here on your subtool layers. Uh, this one in the middle is uh, that has to do with boolean cutting, and I've done a, uh, a I've done a uh, I've done a tutorial on that before. But this last little one, which no one, I mean, finally I heard it explained. This is the transparency button, or the transparency. Uh, icon. So you turn that on. Okay. Now, uh, we filled our, uh, we've done our, we filled our material. Remember the RGB, turn off the Z head, Z sub. And now we got to go down to the material itself and make sure we got some transparency. There's a slider down here for that. And you can, uh, I'm going to make it about 60%, 64. And uh, we'll just make sure that's in there. We'll fill it again. Okay. Now we've uh, we've got our gel shader. We've set the transparency in the, in the material slider itself. We've turned on the transparency icon in your subtool layer. Real important. Now one more thing. You got to go down to your display properties and turn on BPR transparent shading. Give you a warning to say yes. Okay. And I'll show you one more thing. Uh, 
we're going to turn on our perspective. We've got our floor showing. And you can expand this floor by going over here to dock, uh, or going into draw, and just jumping up the grid size. And that takes out any uh, fall off on your uh, corners there. And uh, I like to render at a lighter color for the floor. So you can go in here to document, go to back, and you just drag this out and you can just make your uh, floor or your ambient environment, what do you want to call it, make it lighter color. So anyway, we're going to do a render and uh, I'll show you something there. Alright, so we got our transparency and the transparency really doesn't pop until you got some additional objects in the scene. You know, you might have a ball or a cube back there in the background and uh, you can control the refraction and the degree of transparency under render properties you can go down to BPR transparency you can control that uh, I'm not going to put a second object in here I just want to kind of keep this tutorial short and just kind of demonstrate this technique for making a wine bottle anyway you can go down into the uh, transparency and you can adjust the strength by color and you can actually control refraction to a degree and a refraction factor and this is a uh, color intensity factor, surface normals factor, it's, it's something else you can control. Anyway, we'll do another render and you'll see uh, it's just a little bit lighter. Now, you notice there's not a shadow being cast. Well, you got a transparent object, so uh, yet you can, now that you got a transparent material and you got transparency set in your subtool, you have to go down to where you did the transparent shading in your BPR settings and you move this slider the BPR shadows. Now when you do the render it knows that it must cast a shadow but it casts a shadow on the, based on the transparency which is something you have control over. So we'll do a BPR here and uh, I didn't get a shadow. Okay. Well, I'll go to this light button. I'll have to refresh and update it. And now you see you've got a real faint shadow which is based on this slider and this is a transparent material. So if you slide it way up there and then do a BBR, you get a darker shadow. Uh, you go back further and you get a uh, less obvious shadow. And of course if you've watched any of my tutorials you can get fancy here. You can go into the BPR shadow panel. Now notice when we hit that button earlier in the display for BPR transparent shadow you'll notice that the uh, shadow has been turned on. You got a few more on. I mean, you got all kind of adjustments here. Uh, but uh, you can get fancy with the shadows by going to the BPR shadow and maybe dialing back the strength, adding a few more rays, doing this little angle thing, which has a kind of a dramatic effect on it. You know, uh, kind of a multiple trace type of thing. But anyway, uh, I'm going to call it it for this video. I just wanted to demonstrate that to you and uh, really just show you another way to make a wine bottle. So uh, thanks everybody for watching the video and I'll be more making uh, making more in the future. And uh, for the time being, I'm out of here. So uh, thanks for watching.